everybody, my name is Mary Fedorowski and I'm an artist and muralist based in the Chicagoland area. And welcome to my home studio. I am so excited to walk you through my process of creating a piece of work and I hope you enjoy. I'm excited to be partnering with I Paint My Mind to walk you through the process I have in terms of where do I take my idea to final product. So let's get started. Um, I feel it's really important to start with a sketchbook. So I get ideas, good, bad, and different, every single day for new pieces of work. And I try to just sketch them out just quickly and capture that idea so I don't lose it in a sketchbook every day, pretty much. So I use a small-ish sketchbook, about hand size, to write down little ideas that I have, maybe take little notes next to it of saying, oh, change this color or move this piece around or however I wanna do it, but really just start capturing those things in one spot if you can. That works for me personally. And many of these pieces that I have in my sketchbook that I've been thinking about lately are gonna be part of my solo show next month. So I'm actively working to get some ideas out of my brain and onto Canvas so I can show them for everybody to enjoy, hopefully. So the next step for me is sometimes when, uh, it's kind of like a half step, right? So sometimes when I need to be inspired, I will just have a complete, basically just like a complete brain block. Um, it's like writer's block but for artists. So for me, I think it's important to just start looking at images that isn't the direction of where I know I want to go, but I just don't know quite yet. So the couple books that I've been using lately that I would highly recommend, one is, this is a Faden book. It's Living in the Desert. Um, this book for me is really inspiring because in general, my work tends to marry a kind of a desert landscape with a very minimalist architecture, some surrealist aspects to it as well. So that is a great book for that because it really is based in that. And seeing that I'm mostly inspired by the desert south southwest in say New Mexico, Santa Fe, New Mexico kind of area, all the way through Palm Springs, California, that kind of area. I recommend two books regarding Palm Springs. So one is the photo, photographic work of Julia Schumann in Palm Springs, and that is by Michael Stern and Alan Hess. Some great photos in there. Um, and also Palm Springs, A Modernist Paradise, and that is by Tim Street Porter. If you are a fan of that kind of architecture or love that area, or really even just interested in that area of the world, those books I would highly recommend. Obviously, Palm Springs is known for its mid-century modern and modernist architecture. So as you can tell, I'm very inspired with that, considering a lot of my work is based in that. I love taking the inspiration from there and kind of getting the, the ball rolling. As an artist, as we all know, you don't want to copy somebody else. You want to just take that inspiration, kind of digest it, and then bring out your own, your own spin on things, your own work, and the own intention that you want to have. So the next step, aside from that half step of research, if you don't need it and you have a great idea and you want to kind of communicate that right away, the thing I want to ask myself always is, what am I trying to say, right? What are we trying to say with our work? What feelings are we trying to create? What themes do we want to try to communicate? Where are we going? What do we want the viewer to take away from our piece of work? It's easy to create something that's just bland and beautiful, and that's fine, but what I wanna challenge you with is to make sure that we're going at it with intention. So I ask myself those questions, especially in this body of work with the show that I have coming up, because we wanna look at it as a whole, but also we want people to individually have, uh, have a little bit of a backstory to each piece. So along with what we wanna say, we wanna make sure that we're creating that palette and that feeling with it too. So for me, what kind of mood do I wanna portray in these pieces, right? Historically, I've had, um, had the luxury and the, and the thought process of having more of the kind of uh, sunrise, kind of sunset colors. So I typically use colors such as um, like a peachy tone, pinks, turquoise, uh, sky blue. Those are, among others, are my main kind of base colors. I like playing off that warm and cool aspects when it comes to the color scheme. And for me, the use of those colors also portray uh, lighting that's coming through. If there's, say, a shadow or a bright piece in that architecture, using a different color and that kind of play between warm and cool is, is very important to me. But we're going to stop here and just kind of reiterate that we talk about ideation, doing research, 
we're sketching things out and we're selecting what are our feelings and intentions behind that. And we're going to move right to my, uh, right to my studio bench. So we're talking color. So as we learned in school, we have warm colors and cool colors. So warm colors are in the side of the color wheel that's going to be red and orange and yellow. And cool colors are going to be more in the blues, greens, and purple areas. So for this painting, I wanted to create more of an evening moody feeling. So I'm using a lot of teal as in the, as in the sky color, a light blue for the platform, dark navy for the water, and a lot of that purple kind of color in the mountain areas. To create that kind of nighttime evening feel, a little bit more moody, a little bit more kind of quiet feeling. That's what I wanted to portray and I hope it comes out. This is about, about halfway done. So uh, I got the main base colors in um, and I'm doing the detail work coming up next. But we'll talk about that uh, next. So when it comes with your color selection, um, I tend to mix my own colors, even though you know I certainly use color directly out of the, uh, out of the tube. I tend to like um, kind of tinting my own colors and making sure that they're just the right um, shade to use for my work. So I will create a big batch of color and get it just right. Um, and I tend to use these kind of like Tupperware takeaway containers. I think you can get, get them on Amazon. Um, these are great because they create a really nice tight seal. So as we all know, when it comes to, I use acrylic paints, um, acrylic and air are just fighting against each other on an everyday basis. So um, the less you can expose that paint to air, the more time it'll stay fresh and won't dry out on you and you can use it for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I'll use that together. Uh, another uh, tool that I tend to use is blue painter's tape. It is godsend if you want it to be like this, which is like that light blue edge against a really dark blue navy. You want to make sure that edge is super crisp. Um, I'll tend to use blue painter's tape um, to make sure that that is really nice and crisp and sharp. Um, that way it's me a lot of rework time as well. And lastly, aside from brushes, which, you know, everyone has their own preference, I use a very sexy paper plate as my palette. I know you folks think, Mary, Mary has to have all this expensive palette work. You'd be wrong, my friends. Paper plate every day. When it comes to work, though, in general, I want to make sure that you're putting those base colors in next. So the next step would be, for me, I sketch it on directly on the canvas. So before I do my base colors, which I have done here, uh, I will actually take the sketch that I've created in my sketchbook, finalize it there, so I know what size painting I'm gonna be creating. This is a 30 by 30 canvas. Um, and then I'll start to sketch it on the canvas itself. So people don't do that. I tend to like that, just to make sure that what I'm looking at feels really good. Uh, the composition is really sharp. And if I can make any changes to it now, when it's sketched out, that's when you want to make changes. So don't, if you can, if you can avoid it, try to avoid making giant changes while you're halfway done, because that's really hard to come back from when it comes to painting, especially in acrylics and the way that I do it. It's very crisp edge. Um, it's harder to, to make some big changes. Small changes are okay. Um, but to redo the whole composition, you're almost going to start all over again. And that kind of defeats the point. You want to make sure that you're prepared you feel really good about the work you're going to put on there and it's so much easier to change a pencil strike than it is to change painting when you have paint all over it to begin with so i will lay my base colors on again confirm that's what i really want i feel really good about this one this one i'm so excited about so right here i have my sky color in here which is a dark teal i have the water here which is a dark navy and i'm putting in some mountains here so this is the kind of medium colors that i'm going to be using I added in my shadows here, and then I'm gonna be adding in more of the light colors, more of the highlight colors next. I have my big composition pieces here, the stair right here, and my figure as well, and then I'm gonna to get to it. So after the spot, when we have this, this piece pretty much halfway done, we wanna make sure that, again, solidify everything. I'm sure everything's gonna be great at this point. You wanna add your final details, and basically what I do is just Go back with a fine tooth comb here. The next step, again, I mentioned, I'm putting in highlights. I'm going to be putting in more shadow. I'm going to be putting in more of those final details that just make it that much more interesting. And then lastly, just go in, I go in with my fine tooth comb, make sure everything looks really great. And then at that point, I just have to say, it's done. So I don't know about you and your paintings, but for me, there are times where I can certainly rework, rework, rework. And there are times where I have to step aside and say, you know what, Mary, it's done. It looks great. It's just going to be done for now. 
and be over with it. And then you have a wonderful piece of artwork that you're going to love and enjoy and hopefully show uh, for many, many years to come. So let's recap. We had a great idea. We did some research if needed. We sketched some things out. We made some decisions in terms of composition, how big we want the painting to be, what kind of themes you want to use, what we're trying to say in our work, um, what kind of mood you want to put in our work. And then next, we moved to our canvas. We picked some colors. We made sure that we sketched on canvas to ensure that the composition and the themes feel really good and that we're catching any of those mistakes before we've gone too far in our canvas work. We've added in some base colors and here is more moderate steps to more of that middle road of detail. Lastly, we're gonna put our final details in, in our pieces. And don't forget to sign your work. Um, we wanna make sure that uh, you design on the front or the back, it's really up to you. Um, but make sure that people know it's your piece and that you're really proud of it. And then that's kind of it. It's pretty simple in that sense. It sounds pretty uh, complex when it comes to the step-by-step -step process that I use. It's, it's really just more of a guideline for me. Um, and I hope it is for you as well. You're going to decide what's best for you in your practice, whether you're just a starting artist, whether you do this for a living or anything in between. Just have fun with your work and enjoy the process of creating something beautiful and new in the world. Keep at it. You can follow me on Instagram at Overbite Studio. Uh, I wanted to thank you all for watching this video and also thank you to I Paint My Mind for inviting me to make this for you. Thank you so much and I hope you have a great day. Take care.